Hello and welcome to a new episode about using FreeCAD 1 to generate G-code for your CNC. In this episode I'm going to talk about the debar operation, how to use it, how to set things up to get chamfers, what kind of tool bits you can use to make a debar operation. I will also show you some little hacks to be easier to make the toolpath. I will show you how to trick it into selecting the lines for this kind of setup when you already have the body created, you already have the chamfer created and you want to make a debar operation you want to make this chamfer because you cannot simply select the face and create a debar operation it simply doesn't work you have to have an edge and from that edge you will have an offset but before getting started i want to thank everybody for supporting me both on my patreon page and here on youtube thank you very much any type of support helps me a lot and helps me getting better at what i'm doing so let's get started i've deleted everything that was already created i've practiced this a little bit before starting the video now i only have this body with a pocket in the center and I have selected this face and made a chamfer. As you know as everybody recommends when creating things in FreeCAD it is recommended to make the chamfer the last thing in the tree. It's much safer this way and any modification won't be affected by the topological naming problem. I know that recently it has mostly been solved but there are still some issues which are normal to appear and it's really preferable to make the chamfer last. I will show you in a couple of minutes why it is also good to make the chamfers the last in the tree because I will show you how to make the debar operation a lot easier by avoiding this chamfer and I will show you how to avoid it, how to get past it and be able to select the corner of the object. So first let's take this normal case where you have created the model, you have the chamfered edges and you want to make the g-code for them. So select the body, create a new job, I will use a template and I will add another tool bit after creating the job. So let's go to the tools tab and click on the add button. I will select from here a 90 degree v-bit. It's a simple v-bit with a 90 degree between the two edges. Let's give it some horizontal and vertical speeds. 2000 should be okay and the spindle speed of 17,000. Now I can close the job dialog. As you can see the body has been hidden and what I see on the screen right now is the model, the clone in the job. So now let me show you how to create the debar operation because it is a little bit tricky when you already have chamfers on the edges. If you don't have chamfers it's a lot easier but I will show you a little bit later how to avoid the chamfers. Now let's assume there's nothing I can do. I have this model with this chamfers already created. I have created the job. Now I will select this top face and create a new debar operation. Let's select the proper tool controller the 90 degrees v-bit. Click on the OK button and the operation has been created here. For some reason it threw some errors. So I think it's preferable to just delete the object which somehow got deleted when closing it. Well, I will start over again. Create a new debar operation. Select the tool controller. And now everything is okay. I'm in the proper dialog here. Let's click on the apply button. You can see the tool bit is taking the, into consideration this corner and tries to chamfer this corner, which is not a good thing. So we need to, to set some offsets here. But unfortunately, I don't have a value for that offset. If I set up with for this chamfer larger in order to move the tool bit outwards, it will also go downwards. So I cannot do this approach. I cannot select the face and make the debar operation by just using the selection of this face. I have to go to the base geometry, click on the clear button. And now I have to add all these lines one by one because I cannot select them by double clicking or any other shortcut. Click on the add button. Let's add the last one here. Click on the add button again and now let's also add the inside. But in the situation when I have all the chamfers already created, I would rather split the operation into two. I will show you a little bit later how to easily do that because sometimes you might end up with uh, odd behavior for certain lines. It will go on the inside for other lines. It will go on the outside. So splitting the operations into many parts is the way to go. So I want this toolpath to mill the actual chamfer that I have here. For that I will set a width of 0.01 millimeters and as you can see it's almost perfect. Yes it will mill a 0.01 millimeters out of this face but that's not an issue in 99% of the cases. Let's double check on the inside that everything is okay. 
it seems okay here too i have an offset of 0.5 millimeters but that is taken into account because freecad will automatically move the toolpath a little bit farther from the object so the final cut face will be exactly this diagonal line let's click on the ok button and now let's select the operation and go to the simulator As you can see the debar is almost exactly as I want of course on this uh, object on the inside pocket it looks a little bit weird because before making the debar operation I should do the pocket operation to have no material left there just the edges and then it will be a lot easier to, to see exactly what uh, happens here so let's go and quickly set up a pocket operation select the button face create a new pocket let's set the pattern to offset with a step over of 60% click on the apply button click ok now let's go to the pocket and change the keep tool down to true also mean travel to true and now let's go back to the simulator click on the play button let's increase the speed and as you can see I made the mistake here I failed to select the proper tool bit, the 6mm end mill, and that is because this is something that you have to remember whenever creating the first operation in a job, it will ask you which tool bit to use if you have more than one tool bit. If you have already created one operation, any other new operation will use the tool bit that you have used for the last operation created. In my situation, for the debar operation, I've used the 90 degrees V bit. When creating the pocket shape, it didn't ask me anything about the tool bit. It automatically selected the 90 degrees V bit, which I think is a bad thing. So it's a good practice to always check the end mill that you have here in the tool controller. Now click on the apply button but i've noticed another thing as i've told you i want to first mill the pocket and then make the debar operation well in this case the debar is made first and then the pocket so there's no point for the pocket i want to change their order i have two options first i can simply in the tree select the debar and move it below the pocket but as you can see it's pretty difficult to manage to fit it exactly inside the operations group now it is okay but one method which is a lot easier is double clicking on the job go to the work plan and here i can select the operation click on this arrow and they are in the order that i want i can make sure everything is okay so i recommend using that method going to the job and changing the work plan now i will first have the pocket operation with the proper tool controller and then the debar operation let's go to the simulator and make sure everything is okay And now we are at the depart. As you can see, everything is exactly as I want. I have the final piece with just a little bit of difference here in the corners. You can see that I have a round over. Since I'm using a V-bit, it would be possible to get a square corner. But for that, the debar operation should include some sort of V-carve algorithm for now it certainly doesn't but i think this would be a huge add-on for this operation to get square corners on the chamfers with a v-bit using the debar operation you now know how to make a debar operation on a model that already has chamfered edges it's kind of tricky you have to use that little trick here with a 0.01 and you have to always select the lower lines which in certain situations can be quite complicated you might have 100 lines it's a lot easier to select the face selecting the face would select the top edges and that means that I cannot set the values here in order to get the correct position of the cutting tool bit. Of course just as with any other operation you can set custom safe and clearance heights. In the depth tab I have just one value because all the other values are calculated automatically based on the position of the line that I'm using as base geometry. I have a step down. The default value is zero which means it doesn't use step down. If I set a value here let's say of two millimeters click on the Okay, button now let's click on the apply as you can see in this approach with selecting the bottom line it simply won't work because FreeCut considers that it only means this little portion it doesn't have to use any step down if I choose a much lower value it most probably will create several lines as you can see it takes into account this step down but I cannot trick it 
into making several passes for this edge in the situation when the edge is already created. Now let me close this operation. I will delete this job and I will show you a very neat trick to be able to set the debar operation exactly as you want and keep the model with a chamfer. So I have this model here, the body with a chamfer. How can I have that corner here the initial corner before creating the chamfer in order to be able to set the debar operation of course i can delete the chamfer but i don't want to do that i want to see the model correctly displayed on the screen but i want to be able to mill this face how do i do that here is the trick that you need to know go to the part design workbench select the body but not just the body select the last element in the tree before the chamfer and with that element selected click on this little button create a clone now I can hide the initial body and you can see that the clone always is a clone of that object up to the point in the tree that I have selected. For example, if I select just the pad and create a new clone, you can see that I don't have this pocket here because the pocket and the chamfer are after that pad. So anything after the feature that I have selected in the tree won't be copied in the clone. Now let's go back to our example i will delete the second body and make this one visible let's create let's go to the cam workbench create a new job i will select that template again in order to have everything set up correctly except the tool bit i have to add it 90 degree v bit give it some speeds click on the ok button and now let's do the same thing that we have done earlier selecting all these lines using a little trick to set the width of 0.01 on the lower line now let's select this face select a new debar operation let's select the v-bit i want a width of the debar of three millimeters just as the chamfer that i have created in the object click on the apply button click on ok i have my debar operation which will mill exactly what i want what i have created with the chamfer much easier without having to select multiple lines maybe there are 100 lines i can select just that face and all of that thanks to the clone trick to the clone in part design trick you can select one element in the tree one feature and make a clone at that point so anything that follows that point won't be copied in the new body this way i can keep the chamfer of the original object so i can easily see it on the screen just as i want but i have created a clone which has this corner this allows me to select this face and have the proper edges of the face in order to easily create the debar operation and set everything up now let's go to the simulator increase the speed as you can see the result is exactly what i want in just a couple of clicks using that trick for this situation isn't something extraordinary but when having more complex objects this might help a lot of work a lot of Oops, selecting lines this also allows me to select the proper value for the step down so if i want a step down of one millimeter i will write one millimeter here click on the ok button and i have the step down just as i want even if i use two millimeters since now it's taking into account the real corner of the stocks. If I want to use the two millimeters that I've shown you in the previous way of doing things that it doesn't work. Now let's click on the apply button. You can see that I have two step downs. This is the correct way of setting the bar operations. In the previous videos about the debar operation, I have always recommended to avoid creating chamfers for objects that are going to be built on the CNC. This time I can safely recommend you make any chamfers that you want. Just do them the last thing in the tree and this way you can create anytime a clone without the chamfer you will be able to see the object correctly on the screen with the chamfer but it will also be very easy to create a debar operation to properly select all the corners all the faces to make everything easier so now if i use this operation using the two millimeter step down let's go to the simulator again and as you can see there are two passes and everything should be just as in the initial model of course depending on the size of the chamfer you might want to adjust things in the debar operation here i have three millimeters in the debar operation the width should be equal if i want to really set them equal i can enter an expression here and i will select chamfer dot size let's make the body visible and anytime i modify the chamfer in the body the chamfer in the debar operation will also be updated with that value of course 
using some really out of uh, range values will mess everything up so make sure you set values that are acceptable just as with any other operation and with anything that you do in FreeCAD as I've told you many times don't force things because you might mess things up especially when using the come workbench take good care and double check the toolpath on the screen maybe using the simulator before going to the CNC and running the jig out one last thing about the debar operation is this option here in the data tab you cannot find it if you double click on the operation here in any of these menus you won't be able to find that little option which is the entry point it is the number of the segment that you want the cut to start so if i set here one instead of zero you can see that it starts here but sometimes it works okay sometimes it doesn't work okay again double check everything this is still experimental as you can see i have a very weird line here in the center now let's set the second segment as you can see i still have these weird lines while i tested this model i tested the behavior of the debar operation in order to know what i'm saying in this video i've also seen some moments when it would go from this corner to this corner exactly at the cut level so this is something for sure you don't want to use the entry point only if really necessary it is preferable to avoid it for now and probably sometime later it will work okay so double check before using it also in this version that i'm using right now there's still something that doesn't work which is the direction the climb or the conventional so now i have the operation set using the climb mode if i go here you can see it goes from right to left since i have a clockwise rotating spindle this is correct for a climb cut it moves away from the cut if i double click on the debar operation change the direction from climb to conventional click on ok and now I still have exactly the same direction so no matter what you said there the debar operation for now will do a climb cut not a conventional cut that's the way it is now so there's nothing you can do you cannot change anything in order to make it go the other way around so this is all about the debar operation it's a pretty simple operation but it is very useful in a lot of situations what you need to remember is the clone trick of course remember to set the chamfers the last thing in the tree that's anyway the best practice in any FreeCAD project and it will be much easier to select faces and create the debar operation thank you for watching and see you next time